G'day, Theo the Woodturner here on behalf of Record Power. Welcome to my workshop. Today's project is, is very simple, but at the same time there's a fair bit of learning in it. It really is a precursor to bowl turning because of the orientation of the grain. So this is a tea candle holder, and there it is. We'll be making something like that. The reason um, I've chosen this project is because of the fact that the grain is different from spindle turning. In spindle turning, the, 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 the grain runs horizontally. In this case, the grain runs in two ways. Virtually, uh, you have a look at the grain here, and there are the growth rings. There the, and so the tree is growing vertically. But as it rotates, that will be side grain, and then back to end grain, and back to side grain. Exactly the same orientation as a bowl. So you can see there, those little holes there, that's the end grain, and then we come across to side grain. I'll show you how you can finish the bottom nice and smooth like that, and the, it'll, the project will also involve some drilling on the lathe with, if, if you haven't done before, again, it's something new to see and learn about. So let's get started. I've started with a block of wood that's about 90 millimeters by 90 millimeters, and it's 40 millimetres, just under, it's about 38 millimetres thick. And I'm going to mark the diagonals firstly to find the centre. Having found centre, I'll take my compass and draw a circle. I can first punch that center with my hole punch. And that should be about right. So what I'm going to do is cut this on the bandsaw so it's a lot closer, a lot closer to round before we even start the project. I'll be cutting it around about 45 degrees. So let's go. So you can see how I've cut the corners off and that's made it closer to round. Really makes it so much easier, particularly if you're starting out in wood turning. So I have here a 40 millimetre, there it is there, there's the 40, a 40 millimetre force in a bit and I'm going to drill a hole and this will be the back or the underside. It's not going to be very deep and the reason is that using the new SC2 chuck with the standard 40 millimeter jaws, I will be able to uh, mount the blank straight onto that and hold it so I can turn, drill and turn the top first. I turned one previously uh, and there's the 40 millimeter hole. It's only drilled down to about three millimeters deep, which will be the underside. So let's put this chuck on the lathe. So even just putting a chuck on the lathe, you don't rotate the chuck as you go. You place it there gently and you wind it on. And it's the same with taking off. You can turn it a few times, but as you come to the end, you should always just rotate the wheel and take it off that way. Because if you just wind it around, you end up wearing the thread on the end. Now the great thing about these record power chucks is they have a grub screw right here 
and that grub screw is there to lock the chuck onto the lathe. For this cut, the tool rest should be at a height where the tool cuts uh, right to the centre. So I'm running at about 1500 revs. Now remember the wood is travelling a lot slower as you get to the centre, so you should slow down the cut. There's a bit of knocking there. I can use the wing now, in this manner, to true this up. And we'll just make a little dimple right there for the drill bit. So when we're drilling, tool rest goes right out of the way. And the banjo, I'll remove the live center. I have a Jacobs chuck with a number two Morse taper. And I'll mount my 40 millimeter drill. Now I know how far, it's about a millimeter short of the body of this. Um, that's how far I have to drill. I always like to clean out the Morse taper. Make sure there's no dust. And it should be a firm snug fit and should not rotate at all. Bringing uh, with a with a force in a bit, you should only turn at about 500 revs per minute. I could change the torque setting. But if I take it nice and easy, it'll be fine. That's the great thing about the Coronet Herald, it has three different torque settings. It's still, still quite powerful at the highest speed setting. And there's that one millimeter, which you can see just there. We'll stop right there and have a bit of a test. go down just another millimeter millimeter and a half so this is where the learning is if you're going to re-drill it's not a good idea to start the wood with the drill bit still out of the of the uh, of the work it's best to insert insert it first there and then start the lathe but first of all lock the tail stock face shield down and the reason for that is you end up chewing up. There we are. You can end up making a mess of the um, outside of this rim. Really happy with that. That's absolutely perfect. So I'll take the drill out first. It's important to Take any um, swarf or um, sap off your drill bit straight away. If you don't do that, your drill bit will rust. It's a great habit to get into. 
just to clean up your drill bit when you've finished drilling. For that purpose, I've got this little nylon brush. It doesn't blunt the tool. So this is really not much different from a bowl as far as grain orientation. So there's a whole lot of different ways we can do to shape this. Now I've gone with what I'd call the donut shape and that is because I've tried, I, I spent a whole day making all different shapes of these tea candles and I found that this particular shape, which is virtually a hemisphere, shows off the grain of the wood. Uh, it is really, really quite nice and dainty and uh, uh, so I've gravitated to this shape, even though it's, it's very, very simple. First thing I'll do is get this to round. Now, there are some traps for beginners, particularly with bowl turning, they pick up, they, th oh, they, they say to themselves, I have to rough that down to round. Well, the last thing you do is pick up the roughing gouge because it, it's called a spindle roughing gouge and should only be used for spindle work because it will pick up the side grain fine, but when it comes to the end grain, um, it takes too big a cut and you should never use a roughing gouge um, on a bowl blank particularly with that, anything with that grain orientation. Look, there's only one rule in wood turning and that is work safe. The other things are th things that you need to know. You need to know your wood grain. You need to know what sharp is. You need to know the capacity, the ability and all the functionality of your lathe. Now, if you can minimize vibration in any form, you'll actually be a better turner overnight because it's the vibration that sometimes leads to catches and you end up having to spend more time with sandpaper and that sort of thing. So my whole aim is to minimize vibration and get the best cut I can. And every cut I take is a practice cut. That's why you'll never see me in a hurry to get the wood off because I would rather take three one millimeter cuts than one three millimeter cut. It's great when you're turning bowl blanks to see the shavings fly, but when you're doing other work, the pleasure is actually in the journey and the more you refine your skills. It's easy to take a big cut. It's not so easy to take a half a millimeter cut. So if you work on that principle, then you will uh, be programming the muscle memory. The more you program the muscle memory, the better turner you become. What I was going to do was bring up the tail stop with the live center and that can hold it, as you can see from this shot here, that will go straight in there and hold it for us. Face shield down. I can bring the lathe speed up to about 1500. It's quite a small piece of wood and you don't start here like a roughing gouge and try to do that. Again, you'll, act, you'll take off um, a sliver of wood. You come from the side at 45 degrees and not round yet. You want to stop? I'll stop and I'll show you how, how that's just one cut. You can still see there, there's still some bit, bit more to go. We're definitely smooth in the middle. I can move the tool rest forward now and always stop your work. Let your work come to a rest before you move your tool rest. And I think we're pretty right there now. We can, we can make this a little bit narrow. I was thinking maybe uh, I'll make the center point. A 
around about there. It's a little bit more over to the right. And there's lots of different ways to shape this into a curve. Um, now, if this was a bowl, it isn't, wouldn't be a good idea to cut this way because you would be cutting against the grain. It's best to cut across this way from this end to here. Um, do you want me to show you? I'll show you how rough it is if you go this way. Mind you, I have a very sharp tool. I might get away with it. Well, it's kicking and carrying on. I'll just take one more cut. So this is what not to do because I'm cutting against the grain. And you can see the, the tear out here because I'm cutting uphill and pushing the grain. You really need to cut this way from that end. So to do that, I will take a shear cut. Um, it's virtually a pull cut. And I will use the wing of the tool at 45 degrees to do that. I'll show you the easy way of doing it with using the skew chisel as a negative rake scraper. It would be a good idea perhaps to do that, uh, to rotate the tool rest uh, on a bit of an angle and I will just show you how that happens. <coughs> And we want the tool cutting right on centre. You can see there, using it as a negative rake scraper, we're not getting any tear out at all. I'll pick it up here. I can roll it over to do this part. Go to the pencil line. So it's important now to sand this because I'm going to reverse it. And let's get started. And let's have a look. Yeah, definitely some really nice chatoyance happening just there. So now we can reverse it to turn it. Um, there it is there. So the register is actually against this part here. Now remember not to apply too much pressure because you've taken a bit of wood off. The whole idea is to hold it firmly. The heel of the tool will be, or the, all the pressure will be this way as you're cutting. So there we go. We don't want to split the blank. And that's what happens, that can happen with the expansion force. Now I was going to show you how you can make the cut um, similar to what you would do with a bowl. So I will now pivot the lathe.
I could pivot it. Well, I'll need to pivot it to about there because I still need to get the cameras to um, look down on it. So imagine if this was a bowl. So I brought the speed back down to 1500. You notice I started with rubbing the bevel. In fact, I should have trued this up first. I was going to take a bit more off this. Yeah. And start this shape here. And you can see there, I'll just take one more cut and you'll have a look. I'm cutting with the grain. And have a look at that cut compared to the cut that I did earlier. You can see the nice, nice and, and shiny and glossy because the cut is actually in the right direction. That's the difference between grain orientation. We'll finish off the, under, the underneath first. And that will just be, um, we want it to sit on the rim, so I can pick it up about here and then just go down into there. So I'll take some of this off first. just shift that overhead camera for you so you get a better look so I can just go under there slightly remember it's traveling a little bit slower so I could increase the speed for this particular cut and that will be fine there I'll stop the lathe before I move the tool rest Bring it around and I will shape with that shear scrape. And again, if I want to finish off with the skew, flip it over. There's a little bit of something going on there, but Take that point out from the middle there, that will sand out, and there is a little mark. And that's, something that can sand out. So ready for sandings. That's what you call <laughs> a flash in wood. That's your toyance. That's New Guinea rosewood. Absolutely beautiful. And I would hope that maybe as the little candle is flickering, that that sort of chatoyance might even show up on your candlelit dinner table.
And when you're burnishing it, don't go and get a fresh piece of cloth. Use the same that's actually got the dried oil on it and it burnishes. If you pick up a flesh, sorry, not cloth, paper, if you pick up a fresh piece of paper and think you're going to buff it, all you do is you end up taking the oil off it. And yes, you could put wax on top of this if you wanted to. I can feel the heat now and that's, that's going, that's gone off. Let's have a look. So there's the one I had earlier. And here's the one I've just completed. So you can see there. All ready for your signature. Always good to sign things because you never know. Somewhere down the track, it might be in 20 or 30 years time, people are going to want to know who made it. And there she is. It's a little gold tea candle holder with a tea candle. So that's your project for today. I hope there was some learning in it for you. I've really enjoyed bringing this to you and thank you to Record Power for inviting me to show you what I do. So take care and I'll see you next time. <music>